Hello to everyone out there in YouTube land. This is uh, Hydrogen at Home. Um, this video is a bit of a show and tell and um, talk about a few uh, questions and uh, answers that people have had, including myself. Um, a bit of a look at this unit here and um, some things I've learned from it. And I'm also going to show off um, where I'm up to with my latest unit, um, which I'm very excited about, which I'll uh, talk about more in a sec. But the first thing I wanted to go over was something which was on one of my earlier videos that I still get comments about, and I thought I'd just talk about it and clear it up a bit. And that is about um, whether or not having more negative plates in your system, neg more negative than positive plates, um, generates more um, hydrogen than oxygen. Now, common sense dictates that you're not going to get more no matter what you do because when you split up a H2O molecule you get two H's and one O. So there's that for starters. Um, but more specifically with the plates themselves, imagine, so you've got three plates here and um, these two outside plates were negative and this centre plate was positive regardless of when it is, whether there's any neutral plates. Um, the original theory was that having two negative plates and one positive plate potentially would produce more hydrogen because um, the hydrogen bubbles seem to form on the negative plates. Now when you think about that it really isn't true at all simply because no matter which way you look at it you've got two surfaces of negative and two surfaces of positive. These outside surfaces don't generate any gas so no matter which way you have it you've got two of one and two of the other. So I hope that clears that up and um, we can move on from that. Um, as for the way you wire up your cell, whether or not, say for example on this cube cell here, um, there is a difference when you have the positive or negative on one or the other terminals. Now the reason for that is because of the imperfections in the cell itself. Because it's not perfectly flat, it's not perfectly straight, um, you do get a, tend to get a bit of difference between the two. If you were to have a cell that was perfect all the way through, both the gaps, plate size, everything, you really wouldn't see any difference depending on which way you wired it up. Um, so that's just one other thing I thought I'd talk about. Um, moving on, this uh, stick electrolyzer here. I'll flick it on so it's more interesting. Now, the most that I was getting out of this uh, was in its five neutral plate configuration, that is a positive and negative on the two outsides and five neutrals in between. And um, that was putting out 550 milliliters at 10.5 amps. Now in that configuration I haven't been able to push it any higher than 10.5, 11 amps. There just isn't enough plate area in its five neutral plate configuration to get any more out of it, um, no matter how much electrolyte I add into the water. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. The more neutral plates you have and the bigger your gaps, the uh, more electrolyte you're going to need in the, in the water in order to get it to happen. Now, obviously the idea is to try and minimalize the amount of electrolyte you have in your water, so that is one of the downsides of neutral plates, but at the end of the day they do produce more gas. I have no doubt about that at all. So. Um, on my new design, I think I'm probably going to end up using about four neutral plates, but I'll talk about that more in a second. One little thing I wanted to point out on this, you can see up here, I've tried all, this container is now upside down, I've tried all different ways of wiring this up and hooking this up and, and whatever. Um, and there wasn't a great deal of difference, there were some differences. I did notice that with this bottom pipe, when you've got it going vertically like this, up into the bottom, uh, when it go, gets going for a while, it can actually generate an air gap in here, preventing the fluid from getting back down into the bottom of the, the chamber. Um, so on the next cell, there will be no vertical pipe going into the bottom. It will all be horizontal, and um, you'll see that. So that was one thing. Another little thing. I've been using this method to cap off the unused um, uh, connectors here. This has been working really well. This is just another version of a blowout valve. Uh, just using one of these pipe connectors with a bit of hose and a bit of plastic. 
Now I've tested that on the top and the bottom, it doesn't leak and it didn't change the gas production so I know it's sealed up properly and working properly. So what I'm going to do on my new container, I'm going to build a container later in this week which is going to replace this one. And I'm going to have a bigger one of these in the top of that with a larger bit of piping which will go over the top with a bit of plastic and that will be my safety blower valve. Just a very simple easy way of making one. So that's how I'm going to do that on the new container. Um, wiring this up. Uh, it didn't seem to make much difference whether I had it wired up at the top or the bottom or both. At times I did notice just the slightest bit better having it just at the bottom. Maybe that's because the fluid level tends to rise and fall at the top sometimes. And um, when the wires are at the bottom, it doesn't seem to be as affected as much by that. It may have just been a fluke, I don't know, but that was one interesting thing I observed. I do notice that most people wire up their cells at the top, so on my next unit, I'll probably have it on the bottom, but uh, it's going to be quite flexible, the new one, so I may as well move on to that. And in choosing uh, the new system, I've gone through in my head and um, and basically decided which way to go from all of the different designs that I've seen and all the different ones that I've tried and I basically came down to four different designs that I <laughs> think are the best out there first one is um, best known as the Joey cell all of you would have probably seen or would know about that it's basically the pipe within a pipe system um, made famous by Stanley Myers the biggest problem with this system is <clears throat> Once you've got your pipes, there is no flexibility in the gaps between the the, the, um, the pipes or the plates, whatever you want to call them. Um, <clears throat> it's also a bit difficult to clean, and um, cabling it is is a bit of a problem as well. So I've decided not to go that way. The next type is a type that uses a container similar to this, with lots of big plates right the way along, and they sit in with grooves cut into the plastic or with little small bits of plastic um, glued into place and the water level sits below the top of the plates and um, they put off a lot of gas but they have several problems as well. One, same thing, you can't change the, the, the gap between the, the plates. Two, um, the water level has to stay below the plate area which can cause problems with having your water level at the right height and you know as it goes lower it changes <coughs> how much gas is being produced and wiring it up is a bit of an issue as well so there's lots of things there that are problems. The next type is this type here which would go inside a tank like this where it's all sealed and glued up with plastic all around. Once again same problem. There's got problems with cabling it up there's problems with being able to change the spacing of the gaps, there's problems with being able to pull it apart and clean it so yeah, I haven't decided to go any of those directions. What I've basically decided to do is go more in this direction, but with a design that I'm sure a lot of you have seen, which is basically the sandwich design. Now, I've already made my plates. <clears throat> the reason I haven't do hadn't done this before is because I didn't have the stainless steel. Now, I picked up this from a uh, job I did last week. <clears throat> I got it out of, out of a kitchen. A kitchen-grade stainless steel for cooking or for food preparation, is generally 316L stainless steel. So <clears throat> I'm 99% confident that that is what this is. Now, on my next video, I'll go in more depth about the design features of this, and because I've basically ran out of time on this video to do that. But um, I've got all gaskets. I've just picked up my end plates here today. These are 20mm thick clear perspex. So I'm going to drill those out and I'm going to cut some more gaskets and then I'm going to put all that together and see how it goes and um, talk about it more very, very soon. There's lots of special design features to do with this cell that I've worked into play. Um, it will be able to be mounted either vertically like this or horizontally and there's a lot of flexibility in this design which I will talk about. But yeah, that's about it for now. Hope everyone's well, hope everyone's safe, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Till then, see you later.